Day three of the Bridgegate, tri Bridgegate trial has just wrapped up and it included more surprising revelations. Fast one's Kimberly Walls outside the federal courthouse in Newark with more. Kimberly? That's right, New York Port Authority Executive Director Pat Foy testifying today. Bill Baroni asked him twice to reclose the access lanes to the GWB once Foy had ordered them to be reopened on the fifth day of the traffic in September of 2013 in question. Foy testified Baroni was nervous and told him it was important to Trenton that the access lanes remain closed. Today was a very, very enlightening day. That's all I have to say for that now. Foy also said the September 2013 lane closure did not follow the Port Authority's usual protocol for a traffic study of notifying the affected municipalities and the motorists beforehand. An email cited as evidence shows Foy wrote to several members of the Port Authority, including Baroni, saying, quote, I will get to the bottom of this abusive decision which violates everything this agency stands for. I intend to learn how the PA process was wrongfully subverted and the public interest damaged to say nothing of the the credibility of this agency, end quote. Defense attorneys also asking Foy during cross-examination if he knew about the lane closures and tipped off a reporter before he said he first found out and acted on the lane closure that Friday morning. Foy did admit he then approved a press release drafted by Baroni and David Wildstein with false information the lane closures were for a traffic study. Well, the testimony for the jury to accept has to be believable and uh, when you have witnesses saying they're lying, I think that affects their credibility. Earlier in the day, Fort Lee Mayor Democrat Mark Sokolich, the alleged target of the gridlock, said he initially lied to a newspaper that the lane closures were not meant as political retribution against him for not endorsing Republican Governor Christie during his re-election campaign because he was, quote unquote, petrified of additional retaliation, including concerns for a multi-billion dollar redevelopment project near the bridge. He said he lied. And what do you think about him lying as well as in the person that you're saying that boy is also lying? It's up, it's up to the jury to make that determination. The questioning continues tomorrow when Foy takes the stand once again inside of the federal courthouse behind me. Reporting for RFL, I'm Kimberly Wallace. Back to you. So that was today, but... This thing started with a bombshell. The big development from the trial so far is that prosecutors said that Chris Christie didn't hear about it, but he knew about the closures the whole way through. And joining us now, Doug Von Ois, founding partner of Carson and Von Ois, like uh, Mayo here, former prosecutor uh, as well. So two basic questions. You guys both in your opening statements when you were prosecuting somebody, if you said you were going to show that this person knew and was involved uh, at the beginning of it, I would assume, especially if you had the resources of the feds and you've been sitting on this for more than a year, you probably got something up your sleeve that you're going to show that we haven't heard yet. Am I right? Maybe. I mean, I, I mean it's, it's going to be difficult to understand why if they're going to prove that Chris Christie knew, why wouldn't they charge him? That was I, my next question. I mean, that's the thing. But, I mean, you have to wait till to see how the evidence turns out. But if the statute's still open, I guess you still could. Well, you could, but why would you wait again? And it becomes political at some point because you have someone who was a viable presidential candidate who is no longer, and all of a sudden, um, your revelation is that he's had at least engaged in the same conduct as Martha Stewart, which led her to go to jail, which is lying to federal officials. So if that's all it took for her to be incarcerated and charged, convicted, uh, it does beg the question why there are no charges against Christie, unless he's the chief witness, but why would you make the governor the chief witness? But my God, that they weren't just thinking about doing this for four or five days in Jersey. They were talking about doing this for a month. And you also, we saw Mayor Sokolich uh, from Fort Lee walking away. Again, he was a Democrat, um, and there was a lot of pressure on um, as many as 100 Democratic mayors that they should have so gotten behind Mayor Christie because he wanted to, quote, you know, run up the score here and get 70% of the uh, vote. Just it, It's always the greed that gets you, right? But anyway, and he didn't go along, so... When all of a sudden the lanes uh, were closed, he said, somebody must be really mad at me. So even he in his testimony implied that he knew that there was retribution um, in these closures. And then the guy sends out a dummy press release that he lets himself get bullied on this thing. You get the sense there's more of the dirt that's going to come out. If either of you are representing Bridget Kelly or Baroni here, do you say to yourself, um, the way if this thing's going south in the first few weeks, give up somebody else other than you? Or would they have done that already? I think they would have done it already, quite frankly. You know, the, the thing about this story that doesn't make any sense, if you're doing this to sort of get your bosses back, 
the story doesn't make sense unless your boss knows. I mean, to do it and your boss doesn't know about it, then why are you even doing it? So, I mean, the story just kind of doesn't make sense. But there is a missing thing, and that's Chris Christie here. And because, again, the feeling, the general feeling, Mayo, is especially in that climate and the way the office work, you don't shut down a lane on the busiest bridge in America um, in the first week of school, in a religious high holy days and everything else um, without just two people going rogue here. Clearly, there was some direction. Implied, maybe? Overt, we don't know. But that's what they're trying to find out right now. And just from your background, when the feds get involved, and they've had more than a year to do it, they, they're not in the business of embarrassing themselves either. They don't say those things in opening statements if it turns out that they don't have a shred of evidence we haven't already seen, because nothing's linked the governor to it yet. The federal government engages in very selective prosecutions. Uh, this is a case where clearly they should be involved. This is the government um, playing a board game with the people. And it may have caused people their lives, may have caused people their jobs. It, there is virtually, uh, thus far, uh, very little accountability. And if they would do this over whether you get 78% approval, what do you do over bigger things? So that's the question that everyone, irrespective of your political party, should be asking. Well, speaking of politics here, our next topic will address that as well. Coming up next, New York's Attorney General, he's investigating the Donald here, and it's not just over Trump you, it's also now over donations uh, that were given to the Trump Foundation that the guy on your screen used for purposes that it was never intended. And this one's not just a question of judgment. This thing could very well be significantly illegal. I guess illegal is significant. We're going to get into that after this. Stay with us.